Well, hello, God bless you and happy new year. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you are having a wonderful 2024 thus far. You know, I got to get used to saying it now. 2024, God bless us to live to see this brand new year come in. And I, like you, am filled with anticipation. I'm believing the God of the Bible to keep me. I tell you what, I my goal for 2024, my goal is to serve him, to get closer to him, to get to know him better. My goal is to be the servant of the Lord and certainly not to view the God of the Bible as my servant. Now, my friends, God is many things, but a genie is not one of them. He does not. He don't exist to grant us our every request and to do all of our bidding and to be our servants. What the Lord is looking for is for those of us who will purpose in our hearts that we will serve him. As a matter of fact, the word that God has given me for 2024, and if you've been following this ministry, you know already the word is serve, serve, and, and underneath there, the Lord only taken from Joshua's powerful message in Joshua chapter number 24, when Joshua said uh, in verse 14, now uh, therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth and, and put away the gods uh, which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve the Lord. The context there, if if he's saying, put away the gods that your father served and serve the Lord, well, then the context has to be serve the Lord only. And I believe I, I'm so excited about this, this theme for 2024, because already in 2024, we see, we see this uh, wicked religious polytheism, uh, religious diversity, uh, the religious mixing of things coming in already at a full bore. Everybody's talking about the church service that was held and that was placed online where the people are dancing to hip hop music in church, uh, where the preacher has prophesied that everybody there would have at least three houses with their names on them uh, by the end of 2024 20, and uh, uh, people dancing and uh, uh, what do you call that dance where they, they uh, swag, swag, yeah, surfing. swag surfing and all that kind of stuff. And they're doing these things in the name of the Lord. And my friends, you will not find one biblical description of praise and worship, uh, praising and worshiping the God of the Bible uh, described that way. We're told how to worship the Lord. We're told to lift our hands. We're told to lie prostrate. We're told to clap our hands. The Bible tells us how to dance before the Lord. The Bible tells us how to praise the Lord. And uh, I tell you what, when Moses came down off the mountain in uh, 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 the book of Exodus and uh, God said, you better get down because there's a strange sound coming from uh, the camp. And he came down and he saw the saints caught up in uh, the, the people of Israel caught up in a wicked orgy serving a false God. And the people, the Bible says the people uh, ate and drank and rose up to play. The play there were uh, that word play there is to fornicate. They were participating in all ungodly activity. Now, you're not going to convince this preacher that you can dance like you're having sex. You can bump and grind. You can, uh, uh, I don't know the names of the dances, shake it like it's hot, uh, twerk. And what did you say the other was, Gary? Swag the swag surf. You can do all that stuff, which, which, which uh, uh, brings up 
uh, sexual gyrations and things like that, that people can behave that way and then uh, walk away and live holy. We have enough problems with that when people praise the Lord the way they're supposed to. And uh, and and uh, the claim that a uh, uh, 150 or so, or however many, were saved that night. Well, when you when you make salvation mean nothing, when you dumb it down to when uh, when, when it gets to the point where uh, it means nothing to be saved, uh, you've done nothing. You have to ch- you change nothing. Uh, then uh, 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 you have redefined what salvation is. And if the hook to bring people to Christ is the look of a club, uh, the atmosphere of a club, hip hop music and stuff like that. Well, you, first of all, you, you use the wrong hook. Uh, what we're called to do, the Bible teach, is to preach the gospel. What we're called to do is to cry loud and spare not. And uh, I believe, as never before, that this is what the church should be doing. Uh, as you've heard me, if you followed us at all, uh, you know that uh, this preacher had something to say about the number of believers who seemingly have no discernment at all, uh, endorsing uh, the movie, The Color Purple. They're calling it more than a movie. They're saying it's a, a movement. They're, they're giving it a perfect rating and all of these things and you got church church people saints of god uh inviting uh people to uh go to the movies and listen don't get this preacher wrong don't misunderstand me you're grown go where you want to go uh uh enjoy whatever movie you want to enjoy i have nothing to say about where you go and and, and things like that because quite frankly uh, there's no way for me to know it it's not my business and i don't follow me um, the members around to see where they're going. Quite frankly, I have a life and uh, and my life uh, keeps me too busy for, for, uh, for things like that. But if you put it online, if you bring it up, if you put it out there for the world to see, then you can't get upset if people see it and comment on it and disagree with it. I think some of you, the only thing you want is agreement. And you want uh, uh, your positions to be confirmed. And then all of a sudden, if someone has a differing of an opinion, then you're, you're upset uh, or you feel that you've been done wrong. Uh, I, I, I hold and I'll say it again. I don't understand uh, the, this new this new wave where people just feel the need to share everything they do with everybody on social media. But when you put it out there, if you make it public, then it's fair game. And uh, here we are. Saints endorsing a movie where even the writers uh, talked about how uh, they want the theme of the movie. One of the things that that they want to be front and center, that they want to promote is the uh, the, the lesbian relationship that uh, uh, was shown in the movie. And lo and behold, uh, a rapper, a rapper of all people, a, a rapper. Uh, uh, a cool dude. I've never listened to his music, but uh, the rapper took his daughter to see the movie and the rapper got up and left and took his daughter out. And he left because he didn't think that it was appropriate uh, for uh, that, 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 that homosexual scene to, to be in there. And uh, he didn't want his little girl to see it. And according to this rapper's own words, he doesn't necessarily have a problem with the uh, homosexuality, lesbianism, and that kind of a thing. I don't agree with him there. But he didn't believe that that was appropriate uh, for the, the movie and took his little girl and walked out. And it, 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 I find it amazing that the rapper would walk out on the movie, but the saints could stay Finish their popcorn, drink the drinks, uh, eat the uh, uh, the candy, uh, sit there, enjoy, and then come out and give it a perfect rating. It shows me that one of the things that's missing today is discernment. And my friends, I want to say this. I've said it before. Discernment is not merely the ability to know the difference between right and wrong. Some of us really need that. But discernment is to know the ability 
between what is right and what is almost right. And Satan is trying to trick us in the nuances and the things that are going on out there in the world. And for and many can sit and see the devil, see behavior that in that in times past, there's no way you would have sat through it. There's no way you would have stayed in the movies. There's no way you would have convinced yourself to just look the other way and let's just grin and, and bear that part. And I don't even think that happened based on the response that some has given. I was looking for some of the responses to be, okay, uh, uh, I watched the movie, uh, great movie, but I really had problem with this part, or I really had problem with that part. Oh, no, the saints are applauding it like it was a move of God. Well, I'm telling you, the God of the Bible is saying to all of us that we are, he's calling us to a higher level. The God of the Bible is saying, serve me only, serve me only, put away the gods of, uh, uh, of this world, put away the customs of society that do not agree with my word and my biblical standard and come after me and serve me and seek me and I will bless you real good. I've often said this as I bring this to a close, that Many times as a believer, you have to let righteousness be its own reward. Sometimes the pay for doing right is the, the simple knowledge, uh, the simple satisfaction that comes from just having done the right thing. And I'm a living witness that sometimes, my friends, when you do what is right, uh, people walk away from you. People get upset with you. People misunderstand you and all this. But you ought to stand for right anyway. And I'm 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 take kind of taken aback at the number of you who can misunderstand the preacher, but you didn't misunderstand the color purple. You see, let me tell you, Satan is using the pillars of society to confuse the saints. Now, listen to this: the seven pillars of society. Uh, uh, one man said, uh, and I like these seven pillars, uh, church, family, or actually family, church, government, business and economy, education, science and technology, media and sports, arts and entertainment. Satan is operating in these. Satan is out to corrupt these. Satan is out to move you away from Jesus through these things. And as never before, the one thing that you have to have to, to, to be able to serve God when it comes to your family, church, government, business, ec uh, economy, education, science and technology, media, sports, arts, and entertainment, you got to have a biblical worldview. You got to learn to view life through the lenses of the scripture. Now, before I close, this is my second closing, I want to take the time, and this is for the benefit of those who are watching me for the first time. I want to address the flags behind me. I want to, I want to, Gary, I want that to be a part of one of my first, first uh, initial offerings for 2024. Here at the upper room, it is the conviction of Patrick L. Wooden Sr. based on Genesis chapter number nine that the rainbow belongs to the God of the Bible and that we should not surrender God's rainbow to any group of people, especially those who are walking in a lifestyle that is contrary to scripture, and that is Every bit of uh, the LGBTQ, R, what, whatever, all of them, it's wrong. It's wrong. And I, I pray that more pastors would uh, uh, obey Genesis or at least allow Genesis chapter 9 and verse 13 to cause you to proudly display the seven color rainbow. The seven, do you hear me? The seven color rainbow in your church. 
God said this about the rainbow in Genesis uh, 9 and 13. I do set my bow in the clouds. It shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud, when a storm, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And God says, when I see it, verse 15, I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And look at this. Look at what God says of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. Nothing is as beautiful as the rainbow. And it reminds God, you talk about grace and mercy. It reminds God of his promise, his covenant that he made to never flood the whole earth again with water. And it reminds us that God will not flood the earth again uh, with water. So matter, so no matter how hard it's raining, no matter what's going on, you know that God's going to send a rainbow and that rainbow is a sign that the storm won't last forever and that God will show us mercy. Now, I don't think that we ought to give that to the LBGTQ plus uh, community. I think that every church should fight back by proudly displaying, proudly displaying the seven color rainbow in their church. Hey, talk to your pastor, talk to your pastor, talk to your bishop, ask them very respectfully, I might add, why don't we, or pastor, bishop, uh, superintendent, uh, leader, reverend, doctor, uh, can we display the rainbow since the rainbow belongs to God? And he may uh, say to you, uh, well, I don't want to confuse people. And the fact that people can see the rainbow and be confused is a slap in the face to the church. It shows that we have Cave to such a degree that now when people see God's rainbow, people think of an ungodly lifestyle rather than the grace of God. Pastors do something about it. Bishops, join me. Superintendents, let's do it. Reverends, let's do it. Moderators, let's do it. Praise God. Apostles, let's do this. Hey, prophets. Preachers, teachers, you, those of you, you got to, you got your, you got your podcast, you got different things going on. It wouldn't hurt to have a, a seven color rainbow, uh, somewhere where people can see it. It's a fantastic, uh, uh, conversation piece because, because from time to time, we have to remind the people of what and why we're doing it. And we will not uh, change from that. I love it. And these beautiful uh, rainbows that you see behind me, uh, some of our members made them and they pre and presented them to me. And you see where they got uh, Jesus pride written on the, on the flag there, on the rainbow, because at the upper room, the month of June is Jesus pride month. I hope you join me with that also. I don't think we ought to give any ground. Christ is coming back to get us. And, and until he comes, let's occupy. Let's do business. Let's spread the word of the Lord. Let's make 2024 our year to serve, serve, to work for God like a slave, serve to worship the Lord, serve to work until we get weary, serve to give God all that we have, to serve the Lord is to plow, praise God for Jesus, and to declare God's truth, to love all mankind, and to come down on the God side, the scriptural side of everything. Well, listen, join me right here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for <laughs> first time this year. 
Bible study. Bible study. <laughs> Man, listen, I got so much to say to you. I want to show you something tonight and it's going to bless you real good because what we're up against, we're up against a wicked culture. We're up against wicked customs and these cult, these customs and things want to come in and contaminate our church. And many pastors are allowing this to be done. And, uh, and, uh, and I'm going to tell you why some of it is just merely tied to preaching style. I'll talk more to more about it. Join me tonight right here at the upper room church of God in Christ. And again, happy new year. <laughs>